On January 29th, I had the privilege of going to Highland Park to meet Dr. Jill Meltzer, an audiologist who specializes in treating hyperacusis. Simply defined is hearing many sounds at an uncomfortably loud level. We met in Jill's office where she took down some personal history and explained the process to come. I then went into a sound booth and put on headphones while Dr. Meltzer administered two hearing tests. The first test was a simple hearing test called a pure tone audiogram. Some of you may have had this done at school. A tone is played either high or low in pitch or high or low in frequency. I was asked to push a button when I heard the sound. I heard even the lowest, quietest tone. I was also asked to repeat a list of words like eat. The second part of the test was to determine whether or not I did indeed have hyperacusis. I got to hear the tones again. This time the tone would be played starting at a quiet volume and become increasingly louder. When that tone became too loud, I pressed my button again to let them know. We returned to Jill's office where I was shown the results of both my tests. My hearing was normal. There was no damage to my outer or inner ear. I do have hyperacusis. This is where my brain comes in. My brain is interpreting many of the messages my ear sends to it as too loud. The doctor was encouraged, however. My level of loudness discomfort from part two of this test, or my LDLs, showed in the 70 range. People with really bad hyperacusis can show LDLs in their 50s. I'd like to show you what my wearable sound generators look like. This is my ear. This is a blown up picture of my ear. Trying to get it as close to the camera as possible. This shows where the volume control is and the battery door. This is how it's worn. It looks much like a hearing aid. It fits nice and comfortably. I'll try to insert a picture of that into the actual video. Next, purple goo was injected into my ears. This caused absolutely no discomfort for me. When the goo had molded to the shape of the inside of my ears, my custom wearable sound generators, or WSGs, could be ordered. A few weeks later, I returned and was shown by Dr. Meltzer how to use my WSGs. They are flesh tone and made of hard plastic on the outside. There is a volume control button, like I showed you in the picture, to adjust the broadband sound generated by both units, one for the right, one for the left ear. A soft, clear plastic tube fits just inside the ear. There is no static sound. The sound is a soft sss. I'm not sure the camera could pick it up, but I will try to see if I can make the sound generator audible.
I, like I said, I'm not sure if that turned up on the microphone or not, but it's very comfortable. It's not a static sound at all. It's, it's hard to describe, but I did my best in telling you, like a soft but not a hiss or a static. Over the course of a year to 18 months, depending on the patient, wearing these devices will retrain the brain to not interpret the message from the ear so loudly. I will gradually be able to tolerate sounds once a problem due to the loudness because my LDLs will increase. Normal LDLs are in the 90 range. Testing at the 3-month, 6-month, and 1-year levels will determine my progress. As some of you with hyperacusis seeking treatment may already know, TRT, tinnitus retraining therapy, isn't covered by insurance of any kind. This isn't exclusive to North Shore Audio Vestibular Lab. It is a universal law. Unless you can obtain a grant, perhaps through your county, you will need to pay out of pocket. All total, the cost is three to four thousand dollars, including consultation, testing, WSGs, and checkups. My mom took out a second mortgage on our home before the banks and Wall Street went bust last fall to cover this. I realize not too many people badly needing this therapy, autistic or otherwise, could afford this treatment. I wish there was a way I could advocate for that, and here is where I would welcome some thoughts and ideas from you viewers. The best I can do for now is to provide you with information that is in no way to serve as a substitution for medical advice. It has also been recommended that I get biofeedback and desensitization therapy to deal with my anxiety and phobias that have woven themselves around the hyperacusis because I went untreated for so long and I know that some people that I've talked to on YouTube have experienced this as well. Some websites worth checking out. The American Tinnitus Association at www.ata.org. In the United Kingdom, Jonathan Hazel, FRCS, at www.tinnitus.org. Also check out the Hyperacusis Network. Just Google that. Um, something to mention? World Autism Awareness Month is in April. Please make people aware of autism and the autism spectrum through educating, advocating. Peace.